It was an interesting type of interview for a staff analytics engineer position. Data team lead explained a lot about the inside processes and work culture. Nikita Volinets had only 10 minutes out of 60 to say something between. We totally recommend watching the full version though. Check in the description. Have a nice time watching. My name is Nikita. I'm working as a senior analytics engineer at ICBC, insurance company here in BC, Canada. So I'm responsible for building our yeah, uh, data infrastructure for the analytics uh, for, for our company. Uh, so we use uh, uh, Snowflake, dbt, uh, Fivetran and uh, Sigma, so all uh, modern data stack tools. I'm helping uh, yeah, business to get uh, insights and to use like properly the data, so I'm just training our users and educating them how to use them and also yeah communicating a lot with business to understand their requirements to implement uh, yeah like proper data models and uh, the processes in our transformation layer to to for our analysts to build on top of that uh, reports or dashboards and before that i worked in a pharmaceutical company so we used um, uh, google data stack uh, and uh, dbt uh, i established uh, the whole transformation layer, analytics layer for, for the business uh, to allow them to make the decision based on the uh, data that we provided uh, to them. This is like a brief introduction. Nikita's comment on not using ready ETL solutions. Interesting approach about the ETL. As I got the idea, so uh, you have engineers who just uh, like create some custom uh, extraction tools for, for mm -hmm. each tool, but uh, don't you have any like issues like uh, supporting and ma maintaining these uh, custom uh, extractors. They just build like on a custom and just if like I this engineer who built it leave the company, uh, it's like it will just take uh, yeah, quite a lot of time if it's like a custom based solution. Some additional questions about data team structure. Then you have all data in your yeah, uh, data warehouse and uh, then uh, AE is starting to work. So you already like established some models or you're just starting this process. But you, you mentioned you have just like one analyst or and this analyst like supports all departments. Further, they discussed how they perform data validation. It happens yeah, quite a lot of time the same. So I use the same approach. So we uh, validate uh, data on every step using like, but we use, yeah, uh, for ATL, we use Fivetran. I get like a, a, a notifications if something is wrong. And also, of course, in DBT, I implement uh, different uh, tests and checks about uh, like for sources, the freshness of the source, and uh, some uh, like duplicates or null values or something like that. And for, yeah, of course, for Sigma as a BI tool, we use like alerts and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, communicate with business a lot to understand uh, like if they have any questions about it and about the data and trying to understand what's wrong or maybe it's not wrong, maybe some like, yeah, business related issues. First direct question from the interviewer, why do you use Sigma? We were analyzing different uh, other tools, mm -hmm. like you said, like Looker, Tableau, and Power BI, and some other. Uh, and uh, we just stuck with uh, with Sigma because it's first like it's uh, fully like cloud BI solution, so you don't need to um, install any desktop uh, versions and so on. Uh, also, it was cheaper, much cheaper than all other tools, and uh, it's actually quite easy to use. Uh, for analysts, so you don't need to, like for example, for Tableau, you need to uh, spend some time to understand how these uh, dimensions work and how uh, you can use it. But for Sigma, it's based more, more like an Excel approach, so we can just create a table and based on this table you can build a char charts and um, or like a pivot tables, so it's m much easier to use. So. Uh, yeah, cloud-based, uh, cost, and uh, just much easier to use. So I think in Sigma, uh, I, I allow it as a, like as a BI tool, so it, it's, I think they're like partners with Snowflake, so it's much easier to connect uh, to Snowflake and to use all these tables and data. But yeah, like in, in terms of like, yeah, compliance and data governments, how it's more like, is it like more stable than Tableau? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not so confident about it because it's just a relatively new tool. It's good that uh, uh -huh. it, it doesn't have a lot of like uh, this historical background that other tools had. 
So it's uh, Tima can build new tools, quite new features, quite easily, uh, and uh, like move faster. But in terms of yeah, data compliance and some other things, uh, yeah, it should be like investigated. A few more questions from Nikita about preferred BI tools. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, if you are GCP shop, or, like what are the key concern about Looker you have, or like key disadvantage uh, for for you? As as you mentioned, you are going to like uh, on IPO and. Uh, like in terms of the data governance and compliance, do you think that there are some other tools rather than like Looker and Tableau that are doing like a better job? What is your background considering data compliance? So yes, uh, on one of my previous uh, companies, like working for pharmaceutical companies, so I, I worked in uh, yeah, one of the uh, uh, affiliates. And uh, yeah, it's, there are a lot of compliance issues because we stored like uh, the, uh, the patient's data. And uh, we had like uh, regular audits of our uh, systems with uh, the third party like, company. Yeah, like the, the regular auditing. So asking uh, about how we store our data, how the data is encrypted, what access, how it's stored and what, what access do we give to the users and who can access uh, this data. So yeah, I have some experience with it. What was your role in this process? I was more like, um, yeah, providing reports on uh, who uses this data and uh, what data we store and where. I think for the uh, implementation, it's more like uh, data engineers. They helped me to uh, to work on and implement all these uh, compliance techniques. I was mostly communicating with the uh, auditors and uh, providing additional details about uh, about it. And managing, so I was managing access, uh, creating different groups and uh, uh, like restricting access to the to users, yeah, to Mm -hmm. Yeah, like least privileged access to to our yeah databases. This company that I mentioned, pharmaceutical, I worked in Russia, and Russian we have mm -hmm. our own uh, uh, yeah laws and policies about it. But uh, we also stored this data in uh, in Italy as our like where our headquarters was was located. So and uh, it was like one of the projects how we can uh, transfer data to uh, like the database in headquarters and how it should be stored. So this was like the whole project because initially when we collect uh, uh, personal data from the from patients and uh, healthcare professionals, we should initially we should store it like in Russia uh, firstly because it like have to be stored in Russia and then we just have to uh, transfer it uh, to the servers in, uh, in Europe. And uh, they should be protected as well under the GPR there. I worked also with business and CRM team to yeah maybe restrict access to certain fields and uh, mm -hmm. uh, to for, for example yeah, especially about the patient's data not to not possible to leave any notes about like in general so we just restricted these fields so to avoid any yeah compliance issues so more like this Have you ever done some cataloging during your work yeah, but first of all, we have our analysts in our team, so we don't have embedded analysts in uh, business uh -huh. teams. So we are just controlling uh, what they can use and uh, controlling the, the reports. So yeah, it's not more like a self-service that they can use. So it's more like they working directly with analysts, and analysts they are building reports and analysis based on that. But of course, when we just create a new dashboard or new report. I create uh, documentation about it, and, uh, confluence page uh, with, with description and uh, the main points. And uh, of course, uh, I do uh, trainings for, for business and for the sales teams, for example, uh, showing and going through all uh, the, the steps, what, what uh, uh, the features of this BI tool and how they can drill down to the certain data and uh, like what are the capabilities of this report. So I'm just going through explaining. And of course, I have uh, Success, like metrics of success for each report that I launch. So to, I'm tracking the number of active users, uh, the number of how many just there people opened uh, this dashboard over time. And I send every quarter like a survey about uh, how they're feeling about the dashboard. Yeah, what are the, the comments, feedback about that? Are you using documentation for DBT models that can expose metadata objects inside Snowflakes? I uh, I create documentation for for models, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, using uh, yeah the YAML files for each model, or just creating uh, markdown files to to track more uh, complicated descriptions, and then uh -huh. yeah, uh, 
then every like analyst or AE in our team can just go and uh, just read the descriptions. But it's I think it's accessible only to our team, so we don't give access to the to the documentation uh, just to business. Nikita asks questions how it works out for the team then business users have access to create their own dashboards. Got it. Yeah. So not only like analysts from the embedded uh, from the business team have access, but all the some of the business users and they can build like their like reports or dashboards for themselves. Yeah, but didn't like business mess up with all this uh, when you give them access so they can just uh, so they have to go to you and just to get a verification from your team. This is the main concern that I had just to give if you give a business here yeah, the uh, the ability to create dashboard by themselves, they can just it's something just different. Like and they could they, there are sometimes that are just yeah, the same KPIs that are used by different departments that have like yeah, different numbers and they or they can just interpret this by differently. Yeah. Okay, if I'm a like a you know, sales manager, I create a dashboard and they I verified it and then just you verified my data, okay, and then can't I just change the logic after you verified how you will just track it? Thank you so much for, for the like this thorough explanation of the systems and uh, your approach. It's yeah, really great. So uh, I don't know, like uh, yeah, how many people are there in in, in your team? And uh, you mentioned like, two two AEs and one uh, uh, analyst. I mean, in this analytics uh, department. Thank you so much. It's all my questions.